Okay. So anytime you have a chemical reaction taking place, out of all the reactants that you're using, one of them is going to run out first, right? So Sarah, you know this from baking, right? If you're making cupcakes, you have sugar, you have butter, you have flour, right? You know that if you're making a big batch, you, you know how to calculate how much you need of everything, right? What if, what if you go to, like, during, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, there was no more sugar, right? Right when that happened. So we went to the store and my wife's like, let's start baking. Like, we have all this time to kill, right? Because school only lasts like two hours a day. So we went to the store, we tried to buy, we could not find sugar. So we had to like make things like sweetened with agave, honey, which is fine, you know, but it, there was no sugar. So anyways, I digress. All right, so the point is, anytime you have reactants, something runs out first. Here's an example. Let's say you're building a bike. You're a bike builder. That's your job. Let's say you have 10 wheels, right? 10 frames and 10 pedals. How many bikes can you build? Why? How did you know it was five? Okay, so, so this divided by two, this divided by two. How many frames are there per bike? One. You, I guess you could build like a super bike and like, you know, have it be twice as big. No? Okay, just one. Yeah, so if these are the numbers of parts that you have, you can only build five bikes. It doesn't matter. Like, let's say, let's say your friend comes along and says, hey, wait, here's five more frames. Let's build more bikes. Is that going to help? No. So in every reaction, something runs out first. And the thing that runs out first is what we call the limiting reactant. Okay. It's, the limiting reactant is defined as the reactant which runs out first. Or that is completely used up. The wheels were used up, the pedals were used up, the frames were not. Okay, and to solve this problem, you already know how to do this because you know all the individual steps. We're just gonna combine the things that you've done into this problem. So there are some steps given, uh, but rather than just read these out to you, let's actually just jump directly into a problem. I think that makes the most sense. And actually, we'll skip past that. You know what? I'm gonna add a page and we're just gonna do one from scratch because that's the best way to learn. So uh, new page, okay. So, let's say we're making we're making ammonia, NH3. No. Okay. So, my question is How much NH3 can be made from 20 grams of hydrogen and 50 grams of nitrogen? Okay, so I have a balance equation. I have two reactants here. So your first step is to have a balance equation, which is done. So let's annotate this. Step one, I have a balanced equation. Step two, convert to moles. All right, so 20 grams of hydrogen. Hydrogen is diatomic, so when I look up its molar mass, a mole of H2 is going to be twice the hydrogen mass, so 
So 9.90 moles of H2. Okay. Uh, my other reactant is nitrogen. A mole of nitrogen is also diatomic. So 14.01 times 2 is 28.02 grams. One point seven eight moles of N two. That is my first. Okay, that's my second step. I converted to moles. All right. To answer the question, how much ammonia can be made? Right now, I have my reactants in moles, and so I need to convert them both into ammonia to answer the question. So here's where the mole ratio comes in. All right. So. I'm going to move this question out of the way just so I have more space to write. All right, so based on what you just learned, I need to cancel H2. I need to solve for NH3. So two moles of NH3 in the numerator. And what's the coefficient of hydrogen? Three. Okay, so... 9.9 .9 times 2 divided by 3, 6.6 .6 moles of NH3. According to the amount of hydrogen, I can make 6.6 .6 moles of ammonia. That is not the answer yet. You see, I need to figure this out from the perspective of each reactant. So I need to do this again for nitrogen. I'm solving for ammonia, so on top it goes 2 moles of NH3. And the coefficient for nitrogen in this equation is what? 1. All right. Let's stop here and look at this for a second. I have two answers. Just like the bike example, there was, the answers were either 5 or 10, but we decided 5 was the right answer. How come? We couldn't make as many bikes as the, the, the frames guy said because we ran out of the other things first. So these two numbers right here, only one of them is correct. the lower value. Okay, the lower value, 3.56 moles of NH3. This is what we call the theoretical yield. It's the maximum amount that's possible assuming everything goes right. Now, the theoretical yield is determined by the limiting reactant. So that means nitrogen was the limiting reactant. It means nitrogen ran out first, and when all the nitrogen was done, we ended up making 3.56 moles of ammonia. The limiting reactant and the theoretical yield are both going to be from the same line of work. Right, so if you figured out this one is lower, that means if you go into the beginning of this line of work, this is the amount that ran out. That's the limiting reactant. All right, so the last step then to answer the question, how much NH3? Uh, the theoretical yield is typically expressed in grams. So that means you have one more step. You convert this. The mole of NH3 weighs 17.04 grams. That's going to be about 60.6 .6 grams. Okay, let's recap this. To figure out what's the limiting reactant and to figure out how much of something can be made, it's the same problem. 
it's, it's this problem right here. You first have to have a balanced equation. Next, you need to convert each of your reactants into moles, which we did right here and here. Well, let's finish annotating this. The third step, use mole ratio to solve for the product. Notice that the numerator for both of these is the same. You have to use the same numerator because you need to put them into the same unit so they can be compared. If you solve for different things up here, then you can't compare them. You can't answer the question. And then the fourth step is make a decision, right? So the lower one is the theoretical yield, which determines the linear actant. And the fifth step is to convert it into grams. All right, so I guess the last thing is to make to see if you can do one on your own from scratch. So the steps to these limiting, prob limiting reactant problems are pretty much always the same. Let me give you one and see what you come up with. All right, so. Okay, we have 12 grams of potassium and we have 7.5 grams of oxygen. I wanna know how much of the product can be made and which one of the reactants ran out first. Follow the steps that we just outlined and we'll see what we come up with.